All right, welcome everyone to the second iteration of our Hazardous Weather Testbed Experimental Warning Program, Tales from the Testbed webinar series for the Satellite and Radar Convective Applications Experiment. I'm Hannah Wells from WDTD. This week we have five forecasters and one broadcaster from across the country to discuss several operational and experimental products that they have been evaluating this week during real-time operations. To kick all right. Up next, we have Jason Jordan from the WFO in Lubbock, Texas, and he will be talking about the Geostationary Lightning Mapper. So go ahead, Jason. Thank you. Howdy, everyone. Um, we have the opportunity to look at several products that are not deployed in the field yet with the Geostationary Lightning Mapper, not only from GOES East, but also from GOES West. In this case, we'll be looking at just the GOES East in, uh, imagery. Top left is your flash extent density. Top right is a new product that was tested called the minimum flash area, which is the minimum size of any flashes given for any storm. Bottom left is total optical energy, and then the bottom right again is the merged 0 to 2 kilometer azimuthal shear. We're going to take a look at what happens in time before the Tulia supercell produced a tornado report. We're looking about 20 minutes before the first report came in. And the thing to notice is that in the top left with the flash extent density, it starts increasing from these greens, which are roughly around 10 flashes. And then as we move forward in time, it starts picking up to where we start getting some yellows and some oranges. The other thing to take a look at is that with the minimum flash area, the majority of these flashes remain very strong, very small in the area that we're seeing the increase in the flash extent density. So right now, about uh, 10, 5 to 10 minutes before the first repair first report of a tornado came in, we see that the flash extent density is pretty much peaked out. And then 2212 was the time of the first tornado report uh, in the LSR database. And you can see that we've maintained that same intensity. Now, for the sake of time, I didn't show this, but continuing on past this, so here's 2219. The supercell again continued to move on into the Texas Panhandle and produced a tornado southeast of Amarillo. And you can see in the top right that the minimum flash area remains small. We still have high flash extent density. But the cell just to the south of that, that red up in the minimum flash area indicates a flash around 12 to 1,500 square kilometers in size. So you can see that the northern supercell maintained its strength, continues to have the small flash areas versus the southern cell where the flash areas are a little bigger and indicative of maybe a storm that's not as strong. So the takeaways, uh, GLM product showed lightning activity back ramping up towards the time of tornado genesis with about a 10 minute lead time before the first tornado report. The other thing that it showed was that as the storm continued to gain strength, the flash area started to decrease until it hit the minimum size of 64 square kilometers and maintained those small sizes through the lifetime of the storm. Second thing is that after the first tornado report, the GLM activity remains high. So as it continued to produce tornado reports for about the next 20 minutes, it maintained that high flash extent density, small flash size, and then continued that on into Amarillo's area. Now, the third point is that the lightning jump continues to be an area of research. And now that the GLM is being deployed operationally, we can hopefully continue to see uh, if there are relationships between lightning jumps and both the flash extent density decreases in minimum flash area and some of the other products to see if we can use the lightning jump for uh, increased lead time operationally. And that's all I've got.